Hello everybody and welcome to the first in what I'm hoping is going to be an ongoing series about books on my channel. More specifically art books and other books that I love and have found or am finding inspiring for my artwork. I recently saw a lovely video about art books by Natasha Newton who you've probably heard of but if you haven't then do go and check out her beautiful channel. It's full of art supply chat, art process and the making of her gorgeous serene paintings and drawings. Um, I'll link to it below if you haven't seen her yet. So she made this video about her books and it got me thinking that I would quite like to share some of my books with you. My husband and I both went to art school and over the last 20 or so years we've amassed quite a collection um, of art books, non-fiction books, uh, fiction books of course um, and all sorts of bits and pieces that we've kind of found inspiring. One of the stipulations we had when we built our house, which is um, converted from an old threshing barn, was to have a big wall just dedicated to books and our collection of art books. That has since spread out into the studio and our bedroom and the kids have both got overflowing shelves of books. It's fair to say we love books. Um, so yeah, I thought it might be quite nice to share some with you. And I decided to do three at a time, just three books a month. And this month, for the first one, I'm going to start by sharing with you a book, so a book about an artist and her work. Um, also a non-fiction and a book that's a bit of both. So this first book is this really beautiful book. Um, the Art of Natalie Lette. I think I'm pronouncing that right. She's French and it's called In the Garden of My Dreams. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's got this beautiful sort of satiny cover. It's so vibrant. Um, and it's got her, her little motifs all over it. Just really, really pretty to look at. Um, and you open it up and it's got these beautiful end papers. Look at this just so rich and detailed and on the back it's got a different end paper and it also comes with these sticker sheets which of course I haven't used. I find it incredibly hard to break into things like this especially if they've come with such a lovely book. It's all sort of part and parcel of the whole experience of the book for me so they'll be staying in there. Maybe one of my children will discover them one day and stick them all over the house, I don't know but for now they're in this book tucked inside this lovely patterned end paper. So I'll have a little flick through now. Um, and it's Natalie's work that over the course of the last couple of years has helped to kind of inspire me to loosen up my own style a bit. And it all started a couple of years ago when I was illustrating a book and I had to turn in some colour roughs. And I didn't have much time to make those roughs. Um, and I, so I did them on my iPad, which I can, means I can change things around quite quickly and um, change colours and things like that. And I used, because I didn't have much time, I used um, quite a painterly brush um, so that the lines I was making didn't look quite so cat handed or kind of made that quickly. And actually, I really enjoyed the outcome of those roughs. I just thought they were... They had this real looseness to them that I kind of really enjoyed, but I didn't, I couldn't use that for the final book, obviously, because um, it just wouldn't have worked for that style. But it did make me want to try and bring some of that kind of more painterly style to my own work a bit more. So I've long been a fan of Natalie's work and that urge to, for me personally, to create that looser work and coupled with her work popping up on my Instagram feed every so often just drew me into her her kind of world just that bit more and that's when I purchased this beautiful book look at that isn't that lovely I just I just love it her paintings are just so unselfconscious and they look to me like a real kind of flow of whatever happens to be in her head at the time whatever she's thinking about and the nature theme in her work obviously that really resonates with me as well as the vibrant use of colour and all these little dolls and toys that apparently she loves to collect, the 
kind of vintage toys and dolls and including those in her work just kind of adds this really great kind of weird edge to her paintings the rubber friends listen to me i have something to tell you look at them all bunch of hooligans this guy looks interested these guys are just having a party And it's such a, a rich book, kind of interspersed with quotes from her. This little guy here. And she says about her toys, I'm drawn to vintage toys, but I'm also inspired by picture books, encounters between characters that come to life when I recreate them in my paintings. A little family I've made for myself, whose members become the heroes of my stories. I won't go through the whole book because it's quite a long one. But I just wanted to show you her kind of very painterly, sometimes quite strange um, paintings. And quite got, she's got a kind of slightly naive style as well, which I really like. And naive coupled with just a real, um, a really observant eye. But there was a quote here that I really liked, and I'll read it out to you. Um, Nature, kind and protective, is always the background of my stories, through which I sometimes stroll like a tiny little figure. And there was another one about um, her landscapes kind of being like snippets of what you'd see from the window of a train. There's another beautiful spread at the back. I love her flowers. I've read somewhere that she likes to paint kind of flowers from real life, but also bring a real um, imaginary style to them as well. And basically go as wild or as neat as you like with flowers, I guess. Look at these guys. They look like they're having a sing song. So there was a quote at the beginning in her introduction as well that I found really inspiring. Let me find it for you. She says, each morning I happily go to my studio to paint. I open my books on botany, textiles, birds, American or Eastern European folk art, and I blend all of these inspirations together on my sheet of paper. These paintings tell my life story and speak to my desires, my fears, and my love of colour, of travel, and of primitive and folk art. And I just found that so lovely. There's such an ease and joy to the way she creates her work and chooses her subject matter. And I try to try and remember that, um, when I'm in one of those phases and I'm procrastinating and finding getting started started a bit hard and it's just like just get out your books just draw whatever's in there just draw whatever comes to mind and yeah just start that's all you have to do so I hope you enjoyed this book and moving on so the next book is another book that if you've been following me anywhere within the last year or so, you'll have likely heard me mention it. I read it around this time last year and it's Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, um, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teachings of Plants. And it's not so visually appealing as Natalie Lette's book, um, so I'll keep this short. But in short, I uh, guess this book is it's just totally fascinated me. And it's non-fiction, but it's written stories about the author's life within the natural world. And the reason why I found it so inspiring is that it kind of crystallised thoughts I've been having for years about our place on the planet and how, as humans, there's so much more we can pay attention to and appreciate that we all too often overlook and um, Robin Wall Kimmerer the author she's Native American and she relates a lot of her knowledge to the traditional ways of various Native American tribes just really simple things like appreciating that a piece of paper is made from a tree and to think about that tree and to give thanks like really opened my eyes to how wasteful we are as a species and it really changed my outlook on the products I want to produce um, for my business as in like make them more sustainable get rid of anything in my range that can't be recycled or repurposed and also in my personal life it's really made me aware of the responsibility I have to take care of this lovely patch of land I'm lucky enough to call home so that it can be enjoyed long after I've gone and um, yeah I mean it's not perfect but the language is very poetic which well I quite enjoy reading um, it does make it quite a long read at times and her dislike of supermarkets and modern things and striving to live a life without them is very idyllic and 
a life that many of us desire but for whatever reason we can't live either through circumstance or just sheer impracticality um but yeah for for the points i made earlier and the way it's made me think differently and consider what it is i'm buying or not or reusing or making do with or not i just it's wonderful i really really enjoyed this so yeah if you're interested in the natural world at all this is an insightful and really beautiful read and one I think I'll be reading again and again, like it's, it's, I've folded down all these little pages in the corners where there's things that kind of sparked ideas in my head as I was reading it. Um, but yeah, I do bang on about it a lot, but I adore this book and its message is kind of slowly feeding into my art and my business and my life. And for that, I can't recommend it enough. As Elizabeth Gilbert says, a hymn of love to the world. And lastly, we have a new book that my lovely husband gave to me for Christmas, Drawing for Illustration by Martin Salisbury. And as soon as I opened it, I was delighted as this gorgeous cover is illustrated by one of my favourite artists, Isabel Arsenault, who's, she's just an absolute master of using negative space and shade, as well as combining detail with simple line in her drawings. They're just stunning, as you can see. I mean, the cover illustration goes all the way around beautiful. So opening up and having a quick flick through, we can see that it's full of sketchbook pages and essays and interviews with various artists, which excites me even more because um, I absolutely love hearing about other artists' processes and inspirations. And it's got some of my favourite artists in it too, other than Isabel Arsene. It's got John McNaught, Isabel Greenberg, lots more really it's just beautiful so I'm not very far into the book but I've just been picking it up and reading a little bit of it every so often um kind of in order as well I kind of want to read this in order um and I've read the first section on drawing and illustration which was really interesting and kind of reminded me of being an art student kind of absorbing all of that critical thinking about art making which I do really love to think about in general, but alongside the pressures of making a living from art, it's something I've sort of meandered back and forth from in the years since. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to digging into this book more over the next few weeks. And I really like books like this that you can just dip in and out of and learn something on the way. It's just got all these lovely sketchy illustrations in it. And there's sections on sketchbooks, like this and drawing techniques and applications composition basically it's just a big book about drawing um, which as you know is my preferred way of making art so yeah kind of perfect for me really I'll just have another little flick through so you can get the gist of the book isn't that lovely apparently that's a drawing done and then the the extra bits are kind of whited out so that when it's um, prepared for print, you won't see those those other little details. I found that really interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I'll have a little flick through. Oh, this is the section on Isabel Sine, and I've got this book, um, and these are the sketches for it. It's lovely. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this little look at these three books that have been inspiring me at the moment. Um, I posted their titles and authors in the intro below. Um, I mean, they're here, but just in case you missed them. And I'm sure they will be available wherever you buy your books. 
Um, and I also hope you'll enjoy this new series. We've got a lot of books, as you saw earlier, and I'm looking forward to sharing more of them with you. And if you enjoyed this, please do make sure you like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Bye.